This is Revolution Radio. Revolution Radio Canada, part of the Cryer Network. That was Tragically Hip. Off the Fully Completely album with Locked in the Trunk of a Car. So good, so good. no idea what the hell it means. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely not. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't, that was the it's best better. part about Gord. I, I the, loved it. It's better for him if you don't understand. That's exactly <laughs> it. You you finished oh. my you finished my exit. That that was fantastic. And that was a mic drop right there, boys. Nicely done. Um, <laughs> so interesting. If I may, if I can jump in really quickly here, just talk about the hip for a second. I got a chance to see a couple of the roads, another roadside attraction um, concerts that the Tragically Hip put on back in the day. Um, and some of the lineups were incredible. Let me see if I can find some of them while I talk here. Do the washrooms or like to the beer tent? Road side. <laughs> I track. Well, you went to the you went to the one with Lenoir, of course. So, I'd like to talk about that for a second. So, Daniel Lanois is a massive, massive music figure in in you know in Canada. I had good old Hamilton boy produced you yep. two produced you know luscious jackson produced peter gabriel friend of crier as well by the uh, way oh nice excellent yeah. oh boy maybe we could get him on canadian as fuck sometime. lives, lives uh, in the old lives in the old hood yeah so in the old hood. um the old hood. this is uh, an interesting story so i'm at the roadside attraction and i don't remember exactly who was on before daniel lanois all i remember was um the tragically hips fan base could be interesting at times yeah usually full of a bunch of you know hockey players right you know <laughs> that enjoying a good old rock and roll concert when they've had a few pops they get a little fucking silly well daniel lanois comes on i don't remember who was before daniel lanois i really really don't i wish i could remember anyway he comes on stage just him and a guitar and he starts playing and people are not getting it they are just uh-huh. not getting it, right? And I'm standing there, arms folded. I got, you know, I got a beer in my hand, arms folded. I'm loving it. I'm just loving this the whole time, right? It's like, fuck, this is fucking, it's a fucking legend on stage. <laughs> yep. People start throwing water bottles. Oh, yeah. Come on. Start yeah. throwing fucking water bottles. And eventually, Daniel's band comes on stage, and they start rocking it up a little bit more. People kind of calm down a little bit. One of the Tragically Hip's handlers comes on stage and says, listen, if you guys don't stop throwing fucking water bottles, we're fucking off out of here. Like, Gore Downey is pissed right now. Yeah. Here's the kicker to the story. <laughs> the Tragically Hip comes on stage. Every chance Gore Downey gets to insult the audience, he does. <laughs> He's like, and here's another one for all you fucking assholes who don't like my friend Daniel, and they break into courage or something like that, right? You want to know what they did? Played for 45 minutes, no encore, and they fucked off. Oh, and I was wow. like, "Yes, good for you, boys!" And everybody's like, "Where's the fuck hip, hip, hip?" And I'm going, "They're not coming back, bitches! Not coming <laughs> yep. back! You pissed yeah. off Gord? He's already on the tour bus. <laughs> good <laughs> for you guys! You know what you I know? mean? Yeah, like, literally forty-five, great job. <laughs> forty-five minutes, forty-five minutes, no encore, and they fucked off. Good for them. So good. I, I've always loved the hip. So I've seen, I've seen him, uh, I've seen him a couple times. And the one, the one, my favorite was actually in Niagara on the Lake, and it was in a winery. Oh. It was a very acoustic uh set up it was a small crowd and it was it was magic and it, like perfect night for it too the sun setting over the over the grapes and like it's just it was so cool but my coolest story is i used to live in an, in a neighborhood on the west mountain in hamilton and uh it was just just kind of behind mohawk college i don't know if you guys know mm-hmm. the area yep. over here much but along the escarpment um of the Hamilton mountain, like the Niagara escarpment uh, overlooks downtown Hamilton. And there's houses that are just gorgeous, massive palatial places. Yeah. And um, they, like they were always known to have good parties, everything else. And so we're thinking one night, my neighbor and I, we were on a very quiet little cul-de-sac kind of deal. And our neighborhood was, was crickets all the time. And we heard this band, this cover band just start wailing rock music out of nowhere and it sounded like it was coming from the park that was around the corner from us like no this is like this is coming from the houses over on 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 scenic this is insane oh but they're playing good tunes they're playing the hip it's all good turns out that somebody's a friend of somebody from the tragically hip and it was his wife's 50th birthday party and had the hip in the backyard oh, for <laughs> a private party oh. 
So the entire night we got to sit and listen to it. And, oh, and it, it was obviously cool. was not advertised. Obviously, it was very hush hush until it started. Then immediately social media exploded. People were like, oh, my God, fucking tragically hip tour bus is parked on like Garth Road and like Garth Street in Hamilton. Like what the <laughs> yeah. hell's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can hear the tragically hip. We just don't know where they are. And uh, they played for about an hour, hour and a half. And then they were gone. And it, it made the news the next day. It was so, so big. It was such a cool Cool thing, though. So I got to attend that party without being invited. So it was great <laughs> in my own backyard. Yeah, very much Easy. in your own backyard. Yeah, that yeah, was it was really awesome. cool. Ah, Do you know, cool. I, so I'm a bad Canadian. I never saw the hip five times. I'm five sorry, time. man. I saw, no, yeah, I saw them. I saw them, never. I saw them four times. I saw I, I, I was actually very lucky. I saw them at uh, a, a club in Kingston, which is like wickedly famous. I oh. uh, called AJ's. I saw the king. Mm-hmm. I saw the hip in 90 two at aj's and it was yeah. fucking insane, insane. That was when, uh, that was when fully completely came fully out completely. That was, that's right yeah yeah, yeah. they well, were they were playing awesome. tunes off of fully completely and people are like what is this what crap song is, what song is this yeah yeah like, you know, play little bones you know it's yeah. like, you know yeah. it's like, guys just settle down yeah that's not cordelia yeah exactly yeah, yeah. that's right yeah exactly yeah yeah so, so what do you think what do you think like looking back on the early 90s and everything there wasn't a lot of Canadian bands that got the kind of mass support in our country that the hip did. And what do you think it was about the hip sound or the hips aesthetic or whatever that gave them so much more support among amongst Canadian listeners than a lot of other Canadian bands got at that time. Can I, can I throw on that one? Go for it. Absolutely. Sure. I just, I'm just wait. I just, cause I didn't want to walk over anybody else. <laughs> um, I like, when I started listening to the hip, um, it was because of their relativeness, mm-hmm. if that can be a word. Yeah. Right. Like Gord was singing about stuff um, that, that I knew about, but like also stuff that um, my father would talk about. Mm-hmm. So there was like, kind of like a near and dear kind of kind of hit for me mm-hmm. with that um yeah and and like just just a relate like they're a relatable relatable band yeah and i can actually tie into that derek if you don't mind and they, no that's go a, on. An and, absolutely well, we, we're perfect. really being we're really being polite here stop it being don't do that because i'm here guys <laughs> that's right. yeah, that's right. we'll just talk over each other that's what we normally do <laughs> what the fuck derek okay no it's Jesus. Uh, no that that you're absolutely 100% right in regards to the relatableness um of the band and one of the major reasons for that is they were the ultimate grassroots band they hit every bar every stop every gas station every high school every like you name it they basically played everywhere and they mm-hmm. they really built their fan base from the ground up and and yeah. that was just one of the the great things i loved about the hip is that they were so relatable about uh you know all of their songs i mean i'm i i dig hockey i like hockey i'm not like a dimitri you know who's a, a fanatic um but uh and, and fanatic. Is, well okay. um, buddy you put out a, you put out a couple of blogs about the leaf so far so i would say you're pretty fanatical but anyway um <laughs> so the and your and your universal disappointment with, with the toronto maple leafs but anyway um it, it's it's um yeah, they just have that that characteristic about them that is so warm and fuzzy and it's Canadiana. Like putting, yeah, yeah, totally, absolutely, Ryan. It's like putting on a comfortable pair of slippers. They were they like yeah. they tragically hit for me for forever until unfortunately we lost Gord. Uh, were a public utility, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So, and as I like what I said last last week when we because we did the Junos with the Junos and the Junos and, recap, um, yeah. yeah, Junos recap and Arkells had taken home um uh recording of the year um if there is anyone to at- even attempt at filling the shoes of gord downey and the hip it's the arkells i would say yeah 100 percent. yeah yeah and, and it's and it's all because of exactly what you guys have just kind of laid out is the attitude and the um uh, they, they were a, a touchy band like they would they're, they're, they would touch the fans like they would they would greet them they would shake hands with them they would take pictures with them and, and like i'm talking about like gord was doing that right up until the end 